And it's just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Pete Johnson, who is an entrepreneur, video marketing expert, and professional storyteller. He has spent all his career in marketing with the last seven of those years specifically focused on the dental industry. He has held multiple leadership positions at both boutique and large dental marketing agencies. In early 2018, Pete co-founded Get Practice Growth and set out on a mission to disrupt the dental industry. His company focuses on the use of custom video to help practices tell their story, earn their patients' trust, and generate more revenue. Pete grew up in sandy San Diego where the surf meets the turf. He played competitive sports all through college where he learned the value of teamwork and developed his leadership skills. He's an avid Los Angeles Lakers fan but is still heartbroken by the deserting of his beloved Chargers. He is currently a free agent fan and accepting offers from other NFL fan bases. He also has a four-year-old daughter, Riley, who keeps him young and makes him watch My Little Pony and other Prince's movies on repeat. He's getting very close to being able to recite every single line in the movie Frozen. Oh my God, I've seen that movie so many times. Do you want to generate high quality new patient leads? If you answered yes, look no further. His team has all the right tools to help you grow your practice from modern responsive websites optimized for conversion to paid advertising on search engines and everything in between. In today's day and age, with all the technology and information at our fingertips, it is important to have a multifaceted, omni-channel approach to your marketing. His data-backed marketing services allow you to deliver verifiable results that allow you to track the returns from your investment. In fact, he's so confident in his ability to deliver results that he offers every service on a month-to-month basis. And kids, I'll tell you, whenever you are doing business with a company and they say, look, we need a year contract. um, I mean, my God, imagine imagine how your Tinder dates would go if, if, (laughs) if you had to first agree to dating me one year before you swiped left. I don't even get it. I wouldn't want to have a customer who didn't want to be with me, but had to because he signed a contract. <laughs> what does your average dentist pay you? You know, and exactly what what are you doing? I mean, you know, if you go to McDonald's, it's a it's a Big Mac, Fry, and Coke. What what is your Big Mac, Fry, and Coke? What does it cost? What what are what are people buying from you? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, our most popular package includes a custom website, um, forty four custom videos, which include. Uh, one practice overview video, which is you know where you tell your why, you know show different local landmarks, um, really drive home that emotional connection. Uh, we do seven patient testimonial videos, or as we like to call them, trustimonial videos. Um, and this is where you can let your patients tell the story for you and show you know patients who've had a great experience with you, who who you've helped give confidence to smile again. And then our most powerful um, video marketing product, and there is our video SEO. And that's where we create 36 different videos of the doctor discussing frequently asked questions and topics as they pertain to the services that we're advertising for. So for an example with, you know, dental implants, it would be, you know, what is a dental implant? How much do they cost? Am I a candidate for dental implants? Is there financing available? All the, you know, those frequently asked questions that people are typing into the search engine. Um, With that package, we also include our ongoing SEO services. Um, And that package retails at a $6,000 setup and $1,000 per month. So so tell me the price again. Uh, The one. Um, Yeah, the retail price on that is a setup of $6,000. It includes, you know, 44 videos and a custom website. And then an ongoing, um, you get the ongoing SEO services, the video SEO, um, and that's $1,000 per month. So it's 6,000 down and $1,000 a month. Correct. Wow. And and I see Arun Garg is uh, one of your, uh, he's been on the show uh, with dental implant seminars. Um, Are Mm -hmm. a lot of his uh, implant students doing this? Yeah, we actually were just out at uh, Dr. Garg's summer symposium in Chicago, where I was actually lecturing on, how to generate um, high quality leads through the use of video. Um, and we got a, definitely got a good response and we work with a, a lot of his students. So is, um, is dental implants, is that mostly elderly senior citizens with white hair? Is that the majority of the market or, do, um, or not? That's so the, yeah, no, that's the majority of the market. And a lot of our clients are actually, um, one of their first questions is, are the elderly population gonna be looking at videos and stats that Google put out, uh, 
you know, baby boomers are actually one of the people who use YouTube the most in that once they hear about a new service, they're very likely to go to YouTube and watch videos explaining that service or watch testimonials of people who have used that service before they actually make a decision. Um, so yeah, for implants, baby boomers and, you know, the elderly population are typically the ones who are taking advantage of that. But that doesn't mean that, you know, people in their thirties and forties don't need implants and aren't going to take advantage of that as well. You know, in you know, in my world, you know, I, I was a trained, you know, when I got my MBA, they just beat in our head, like uh, beating the street by, um, 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 Peter Lynch, where, you know, don't worry what the Wall Street boys are saying. What do you see in your own backyard? You know, don't, mm -hmm. don't read what they're saying about, uh, you know, Boston market. Go eat at Boston market. Do you like the food? Did everyone else like it? In my world, everybody is switching from television to their smartphone. And, and if they mm -hmm. go back, go back, it's towards a, an iPad. I mean, I mean, it's just like, mm -hmm. it's almost everyone I know says about the only thing they watch television for, like the like is sports. Uh like yeah, like, that's like, the only like, reason like, I have a cable subscription. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Saturday night uh, we had a big party watching the MMA fight. Did you see that that uh yeah. MMA fight? The the two lovely ladies, one from Brazil and I mean uh um, I did not see that fight no. Yeah, I mean I mean that's about the only thing I ever use my big screen for because you know if mm -hmm. if if you're sitting in a house of four people, no one wants to be watching the same show at the same volume. So yeah, I, I see YouTube taking over. So you charge $6,000 down because you don't have a monthly contract. So if you're listening mm -hmm. to this, um, 6,000 down, he's got to get his money back. And then after that 6,000 down, you, you have the right to quit, right? Yeah, you do. And then they would keep their custom website. Would they get to keep and own their custom website? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things I made sure of when I started this company was I I hated when clients would think that they owned a website and they didn't. And the <laughs> previous companies I worked for were big, big proponents of that. Um, so anything and everything that we create for a client on behalf of them is owned by them. And further, if you do leave us, we'll help facilitate you know the transfer of your website because you're still going to have to host it somewhere. You're still going to have to maintain it. So if all you wanted to do is just host and maintain your website with us, we charge $50 a month or we'll help you find somewhere you can host and maintain it on your own. And what are you making that custom website in? Is that, um, what, what do they call that? Word? Uh, uh, WordPress. Word, is it WordPress? Yeah. So we design all of our, what's, our websites uh, with WordPress. Um, we do a lot of custom coding on you know the back end when we're developing the website. Once the website goes live, though, we have it put into a WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get editor. So our clients can easily make edits on their own. I tell all my clients, though, you're paying us to make edits. We don't charge you to make edits. So if you need anything, just send it over to us and we'll implement those changes for you. WordPress is owned by a privately held company called Automatic. and But you were saying for the, um, for the edits that you connect up their website to what? We connected to a editor called Elementor, which is a content management system, which is a WYSIWYG content management system. What you see is what you get. So basically it allows our clients to drag and drop content in and edit it very easily, as opposed to like if it was a fully custom site, like in terms of you know how they're editing it, they would have to know code to edit it. So we want to make it as easy as possible for people to maintain it on their own without our help. Is my average homie, are they are they good at this uh, high tech web stuff and editing or are they special? No, yeah. No. yeah. Yeah. Very, very few and far between when I'll meet a client who actually knows how to navigate the back end of a website. Um, and again, that's why I tell everyone, like, if you need a change, just let us know. We'll make it for you. We're not going to bill you for it. So might as well utilize the company that you're paying. Huh, okay. And um, so your 44 custom interviews, I, I know what they're thinking. They're they're driving to work and they're saying, dude, I, I don't even have 44 things to talk about. How do you make <laughs> 44 custom interviews? Yeah, no, great question. Um, well, one of them, the practice overview video, that's where you're telling your story. So we're obviously going to help you come up with the questions and kind of give you an outline of the what we want to accomplish with that video. But then it just takes you sitting down figuring out you know, what you want to say. Um, patient testimonial videos, seven of those, um, you're actually not speaking. The patients are speaking for you. So we have a set of questions that we ask um, and help prepare your patients for. Um, and then for the video SEO portion, um, 
we're actually doing keyword research on the back end to figure out how people are searching for the services that you provide. Once we do that keyword research and figure out which key phrases have the highest volume, we then turn around, create the questions, write out the scripts, and bring them out for you. Because like I said earlier, we bring a teleprompter when we come out to do the shoot. So you're just sitting back, relaxing, reading out the teleprompter and talking about what you know best, which is dentistry. So if, if you go to Dental Town, there's 50 categories. There's a um, quarter million dentists. There's 50 categories. Um, they're all organized. And um, one of the categories is marketing. And one of them is website. And another category is building your website. And um, so they're all asking, um, new owner needing new website. Once it built in house, who do you recommend uh, that is affordable and allows login and changes in the office? Have you looked into office site? Anyone use that? And what is its cost? Uh, the next guy says we use Wix, pretty affordable. So anyway, so what what would uh, what would you say to that guy who's asking? Um, so um, they would ask you on Shark Tank, are there any competitors in your space? Um, um, yeah. Who who would be your main competitor? Is OfficeSite one of them? Um, no, I don't really view OfficeSite as a competitor. Um, one, they put out a lot of templated websites. Um, their websites come with a lot of stock content. Um, and they don't really focus on the power of video. Um, when it comes to you know marketing companies, I really try to rank them into two different tiers. You have like the upper echelon and the lower echelon. Some competitors in the upper echelon um, would be a Wheel Media, um, Progressive um, Implant Marketing, um, and those are like what's different about us is. We're focusing on video first, and there's no other company currently in the dental industry that is focusing on video for digital marketing purposes. So when it comes to a competition, you know, I welcome all competition. I think it makes the industry um, healthy and breeds, you know, creativity. But there's really not much out there right now in terms of competition for what we're really trying to push forward, which is video content marketing. So basically um – one of your products was um, um, SEO, uh, video mm -hmm. SEO. Do you think templates, websites with templates, do you think that affects your SEO negatively? Um, templates is a, it's a loaded word because if we're talking about building a website off of a template, if your website looks similar to someone else um, but has like the same bones, that's not going to really affect your SEO. What matters is the content that lives on your website. Your website is the vehicle. Everything that you do to make your website more visible or find new patients is the gasoline or the fuel that you're putting into your vehicle. And now obviously, you know, the prettier your vehicle is, the more customized it is, it's going to help build upon that emotional connection because let's face it, for a while there, every single website looked the same. They all have the same stock photos of the smiling family. You can't really tell what ethnicity they are. They're kind of right down the middle. They, they could be white, black, green, purple, whatever they may be. And people just got used to seeing that. And in the eyes of the patient, you know, what, what separates you from the person down the street? They don't know. They need us to tell them why they should choose you. And when you put out content that's custom and talks about your practice, and in particular video content, it helps with your overall visibility. And um, Google definitely loves video, so they're going to shoot you up their search rankings. So you um, said the upper echelon was uh, progressive dental marketing. That's Bart Nelling. Um, um, the other one you mentioned was uh, Wheel Media. Why, why did you like mm -hmm. Wheel Media? Um, I actually worked for Wheel Media prior to starting my own company. And that's where I learned a lot about um, how to use video marketing and how to really put out, you know, high quality custom websites and mix that in with a, you know, a high powered marketing campaign. Um, so, that's the reason I think they're a great company. Um, not only do they put out great work, but I worked for them and know they put out a quality product. So I loved your term, trustimonials. I've never heard it before. So I'm always going to, um, whenever I steal that term, I'm going to try to remember to give Pete Johnson the credit. For it. I, I love that term. But Well, let's, I'll take it a step further. We got to give Dr. Glenn Tao and Bird Eye some credit for that. Uh, he helped me come up with it. He said I can use it, so... Really? Well, that's cool. Yeah. You have to get that in dentistry because like say, I know when I buy a Big Mac or a Dr. Pepper or a Nike tennis shoe, you know what that product is. But when someone looks you in the eye and says, you need to have your gallbladder removed. I mean, 
<laughs> I, 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 I'm not a gallbladder expert. I, I'm sitting here looking at you thinking, I mean, I, you know, on those shows, like, okay, do you want to call a friend? Well, what friend do I know that is an expert on gallbladder? Um, so how mm -hmm. do you, uh, in, in the era of fake news where nobody believes anything anymore, how do you um, create trust for dentists, for their patients, when dentists are truly only selling trust because our product is invisible? When you're selling the invisible, it's based on trust. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you tell a story that doesn't sound like yeah. fake news and, and, and it's, and it's honest. I, I, that's a great question. And one of the things that I tell every client that I work with of why video is so powerful. So let's, let's say, you know, I'm a patient and I have my daughter's graduation coming up. I know that I need to get my teeth fixed. I'm not confident with my smile. So I'm going online. I do a Google search. Um, I've been told in the plat in the past that I need implants. Um, so I do a search for, you know, dental implants near me. Um, a website pops up with video on it. So you get to the website, you have a video header that immediately draws them in. And that video header, you may have, you know, local landmarks, videos of the doctor interacting with staff and patients. That already is going to give them enough to actually do a little bit more research. As they do what everyone would do on a website, they start to scroll down. You'll see the next section is going to be the overview video, and that's where they can get to know the doctor. The next section down is going to say, you know, we take great care of our patients or whatever the wording may be. And then it'll have video testimonials of or trustimonials of people who you've given care to who can vouch for your services. And then further, you have, you know, 36 different videos of you explaining different services that you provide and answering different frequently asked questions. What you're doing is you're helping people make an educated decision. It's all about guiding people to the decision you want them to make. And you do that by getting their trust and getting them to like you. The way you get their trust is by providing content that applies to what they're searching for. How do you get them to like you? By being yourself. If someone doesn't like you, it, there's not much you can do about it. So that's what video really helps do is creates more qualified leads. When people are watching those videos and then pick up the phone to call, they already have an idea of what you're about, what you stand for. They've seen what you can do for other patients. And they're not as concerned as much about, oh, is this doctor just telling me I need something where I don't really need it? It's, it's again, it's about being their guide and holding their hand through the decision-making process. And when we look at dentistry, I mean, it's got 10 specialties now. It, it, only, had, um, it only had nine when I got out of school, but the website couldn't be the same value for each. I mean, wouldn't it be more valuable for uh, a dentist placing implants or doing ortho or Invisalign than someone who had a Medicaid practice? Um, yes and no. Obviously, you want to know who your target audience is and cater your messaging around that. But when it comes down to it, people that are you know going into a Medicaid practice or going into a high-end oral surgery practice, they still like video content. And it's going to help you increase the amount of people that you see regardless of if you're trying to get more Medicaid patients or you're trying to get, you know, a $25,000 full mouth reconstructed. It's, it's really about, again, analyzing the data and trends and seeing that video content is being consumed at all time highs. Cisco, the large corporation just put out a study that says by 2021, they predict that 82% of all internet traffic will be video. Now, obviously the Netflixes, the Hulus, the Amazons have a big chunk of that video streaming, but, it just shows that people like video content. And when you put out video content, you're going to connect with people on a different level. What are most of your customers uh, targeting? Who is the target market of most of the customers that you're targeting? Is it mostly, well, what is it? Dental implants? We, we mentioned it yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a lot of implant um, out there just because it's such a, a profitable service. Um, a lot of Invisalign, um, sleep, sedation dentistry, um, and then there's a lot of GPs that are just going after your bread and butter, you know, your crowns, your cleanings, all of that. It, you know, if you can get someone to get in the door and start accepting your treatment, then you can always earn their trust and loyalty by providing them a great product. So it's, it's to me, it's about getting people in the door and then letting your true color shine and video just helps accelerate that process. What I just heard him say is and and I've had this confirmed um, all around the world is that you know implants and Visalign 
What do they have in common? Well, your government insurance company like Medicaid or the National Institute of Health for England, and they have it in France and like, like go to Tokyo. The Japanese government will pay you $100 for a molar endo, which nobody in Japan can do and make money on. Um, but they don't set the fee for implants or Invisalign. So why would I do a molar root canal for $100 and lose several hundred dollars when I could extract the tooth, place an implant and charge $1,500? Um, so, so whenever somebody else sets your fee, um, it, it's dangerous uh, to be in business when mm -hmm. someone else is setting your fee. And that's, that's what government is. I mean, the most efficient way to spend money is I spend money on me. It becomes less mm -hmm. efficient when I spend money on Pete Johnson. It even becomes insane in inefficient when I spend other people's money collected through taxation for a service for <laughs> other people healthcare, what, what have you. And so that's what I see. I see the people that are breaking, that are focusing, um, they're, they're using their, their base, whether it's a Medicaid base, a Medicare base, a denture world reline base, and they're using their base to build a relationship and trust with to upsell 10 or 20% of them to more premium products. Like I've said several times, the, the single largest implant uh, practices I've ever seen, they always have the same business model. They went to an old town, bought the 50 year old denture world that's, you know, some lab techs relining dentures for almost no money, buys that and now gives you the option, well, did you want to reline or did you want to just snap that denture mm -hmm. onto two implants? or all, all the way to all on four. And I mean, these guys are telling me they're getting one all on four out of every, for 25,000 arch for every um, hundred relines. Well, they don't even care about the 99 relines when you're doing a $50,000 case. Um, so um, so are, so you're saying um, that most of your interest so far has been in implants and Visalign and sleep dentistry. And that makes me, my next question on Visalign, how does an orthodontist build a website when he's trying to attract a child to want to come to your practice who's all cool and everything, but mom and dad are paying the bill? So where, where, yeah. where's the bridge between mom and well, daughter? Mm -hmm. So most, most of the time, a, a younger person, let's call them an adolescent, they're not going to be scheduling their own appointments. You the mom or the dad will be scheduling the appointment for them. And when you're looking at, you know, when my wife is looking at a website for our daughter, she wants to see that one, and my daughter's four, so this is gonna be a little bit different for Invisalign, but is my daughter gonna be entertained? Does the staff look friendly? Are there games and stuff for her to play with while she is waiting? And with video, you can demonstrate all of that clearly. You can show videos of the waiting room you know, one of our my favorite websites is www.smiletx.com. It's an ortho practice we work with in McKinney, Texas. And one of the things that we're highlighting in that video is of his younger adolescent patients utilizing all the fun stuff in the waiting room, like the iPads, you know, the TV, the different games that he has. So it's again, it's it's about figuring out who your target audience is and building your message around that. You don't want to have the same message as everyone else. You want it to be true to who you are. And again, video helps you do that. What's the name of that website though? www. Smile. Yeah. www.smiletx as in texas.com. Would you say implants? Is that your number one category? And then uh, orthodontic uh, second or? No, I honestly would say that. Yeah. Implants is probably number one, but there's not really a clear number two. And even our, our practices that are focusing on implants, we're, we're doing more marketing than just the implants. It's, it's, I think it's, and obviously this depends on the practice, but you don't want to focus on just one thing. You definitely want to attack it from different angles and have different streams of revenue. So while yeah, implants are great to focus on, but we can focus on hygiene and getting people in for hygiene and cleanings. And then if the, you know, the doctor and the staff are trained, like we talked about earlier, easily, you know, gain their trust, and upsell them onto dental implants if that patient, you know, happens to need implants in the future. And what what do you think are, are um what what do you think are the other major issues in um dental websites for dentists? <laughs> There's a lot. Um, I would say the number one issue that I face as um, you know when I'm trying to bring on a new client 
is that there's so many companies out there that promise the world and then under deliver. So my main job is getting these dentists to trust me that I'm not going to burn them, that I'm not just going to take their money and never talk to them again. And that's, that's really unfortunate. Um, it's never fun, you know, having to basically tell someone that you're not lying because they have been burned. And I see it very often. So we're all about trust and transparency. You know, we want to be the first one to deliver good news, the first one to deliver bad news. Um, and I think for practices, one of the biggest problems that I see is they're not trained on how to handle inbound leads. When you have a, a digital lead come in from a paid search, you need to handle that lead much differently than you would handle a referral or a family and friend that you know comes in. So it's about you know developing a system with your staff on how to track those leads, how to follow up with those leads. Are we coming up with a script of different bullet points that you're going to cover when talking to someone? Are we giving um, people the ability to communicate with you in multiple different ways? You know, the older generation, they're probably going to still pick up the phone or maybe they'll fill out a form on your website. But younger people love to text. If you can allow them to text your, you know, your office line, then you're going to help convert those patients into actual or convert those leads into actual patients by giving people what they want in the way that they want it. So I noticed um, we were talking earlier about um, um, offsite. Um, that was actually bought by Henry Schein. Uh, I always mm-hmm. wonder if, that, if that's a uh, good news or a bad news. Do you, do, you, do you think when a big company like that gets picked up uh, by an even bigger company, do you think, um, I mean, I don't know. I just, I just think of uh, when, yeah. I just think of when Henry Schein bought Dentrix and, and ever since they bought Dentrix, I mean, just think of all the dental companies that all sprung up in uh, Utah on the uh, Utah slopes uh, just to do all these innovations that I always sat there scratching my head, think, why didn't Dentrix just do that? Um, so, um, yeah, I think when a large company purchases another large company that you're going to lose a little bit of the quality and you're also going to kind of lose that innovative spirit. Uh, I was listening to a podcast the other day, uh, Masters of Scale, and it was talking about how the startups need to have like a pirate's attitude or like a buccaneer to where you have that created creativity, you're fighting, you know, maybe your company is going from paycheck to paycheck to make payroll, but you're constantly fighting and trying to innovate and make your product and validate it. Once you become really big, you have lots of investors and profits to worry about that, that innovation tends to get lost. So while I think it's a healthy and a normal life cycle for a business, I do think that these younger, smaller companies are going to fight a little bit more for your business and ultimately put out a better product. Um, when you were talking earlier about WordPress, um, there is so many plugins uh, on the market for uh, WordPress. Do you like any of them? Uh, do you see? Do you think uh, dentists um, get tech savvy and learn those plugins, or do you think? from what you've seen, they should concentrate on learning how to place dental implants and uh, leave the plugins for someone else. Yeah. I mean, personally, I like to educate myself on, you know, lots of different things. And if I was a dentist, I would probably educate myself on the products and mess around with them. But at the same time, time is money. If you can pay someone to do something for you and one, they can do a better job and they can do it quicker than you can you're going to save money by not wasting time on doing it. Now, however, if you're a startup practice, you're trying to cut, you know, costs down and keep everything as low as possible, then yeah, I encourage you to go out there, watch tutorials on YouTube, learn about the different ways that you can build a website. Again, we use WordPress and then we use the plugin called Elementor to actually, um, you know, edit the websites on an ongoing basis. It's a very intuitive and simple platform to use, like kind of on a high level. Obviously, you can get into the weeds and do a lot with it. But from a you know a consumer standpoint, yeah, like I think that everyone should educate themselves on the different tools available to grow their practice. Huh. Okay. Um, but in your experience, what percent of dentists? Because she's she's driving to work, she's all by herself. The whole tagline for Dental Town was so that 
No dentist will ever have to practice solo again. And she's just, they, they always like to know what everybody else in their class was doing because they went through dental school with a hundred people. Um, mm -hmm. So what percent of a hundred dentists are getting all tech savvy and learning these plugins and all that stuff? And what percent are saying, dude, you only manage people, time and money. I don't have the time to focus on this. I need to learn how to bone graft. Yeah. What would you say yeah, the breakdown say is? Probably about 5%. 5%? Per, 5 Huh. So, yeah. so it's almost like, like a hobby. Um, yeah. And um, a dentist under, uh, God, I wish you would just spend a day on the, um, I wish you really on building your website. You you could answer all these questions. Uh, there's just so many of them. This guy asked them, SSL and site redirects. What is that all about? Uh, we recently purchased an SSL certificate. I noticed today the site still wasn't listed as secure. So I contracted our website design company to receive the following reply. I had our team log in and check to see what is going on with the SSL. The SSL has been installed since September 21st, but the force redirect was not showing it in the browser bar. This means Google would still see it as secure, but the user could not see it in the address bar. I will waive your next month SSL fee for the inconvenience for you not being able to see the SSL. <laughs> and the next guy says that is a bullshit response. I was going to say that sounds like a bullshit response. <laughs> um, SSL is very simple. All it is is, is a cert security certificate. So instead of your website address being HTTP, it's HTTPS. And it's industry standard because if Google doesn't, it really only applies to sites where you're um, have secure information. If you're accepting credit card payments or have you know HIPAA information on there, that's when it's needed. Most websites don't need to be HTTPS, but with that being said, Google will warn people if it's not a secure website. So industry standard now is every single website is HTTPS. Um, it's super simple to add on. I mean, it, it costs like $15 to out of security certificate. So when I get emails from dentists, they always have their website and their link. So I just pulled up the top email I got. And first thing I always see is that it says not secure. And uh, I, I did not, I, it just says www dot blah, blah, blah. Uh, but yeah, if I go to uh, your website, it does. It says HTTPS. So that that's the deal. Um, mm -hmm. huh. Do you, I, 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 it, it creeps me out because you're always worried about getting uh, bugs and malware and all that stuff like that. Um, so, uh, um, I, I actually, um, I, I'm actually s more than shocked at the average dental website that I see. I mean, you I know, know. Uh, you know, the guys always send me emails. They say, you know, it's chip and then they'll have their, the, the, their, their name or whatever. So I click it and I always think to myself, oh my God, I mean, it's just uh, terrible. Um, so, um, I want to go back to SEO. So if every single dental website company says, I'll make you first on SEO, all of them but one have to be lying. So so what what, mm -hmm. what what are they supposed to think when they see um you know hey you're not showing up first on on your website search. So so what what Well first of all you should never work with a company that guarantees first page placement. Like you said if everyone's guaranteeing it someone has to be lying. What people need to focus on is more about the ROI that you get from working with your marketing company. Now, obviously, there's a direct correlation between ROI and your wherever you rank in the search engine. The higher you rank, typically speaking, the higher the ROI you're going to have. Um, but what it comes down to is working with an SEO company that you can trust and that you can see that is putting in work and is being transparent about the work that they're doing. Um, and with how many different key phrases there are, it's it's about figuring out which ones work for your practice. Everyone wants to be on page one for dentists near me. But if everyone's trying to go on to page one for dentists near me, why not find a different key phrase that will still bring in the same types of patients that not everyone is trying to optimize for? And that way, you're going to you still get your, your website out there, but you're not competing against every single person. And that's all figured out through doing keyword research when you know, a, a client would come on board with us is identifying where is makes the most sense to start attacking um, and where to kind of focus our efforts on. Um, one, one of the townies, uh, Dr. Chung asked, um, should he be um, trying to get a bunch of different domain names? I mean, uh, I mean, 
it's your preference. There's really no benefit to it. If you want to get the ones that are most similar to yours to make sure that no one purchases that in the future, it's good. A lot of doctors like to use their name in their domain. That's where I'd actually advise against. If you ever want to sell your practice, it's good to have a domain that's branded like about the location, like at sandiegodentist.com, not drjohnson.com. When you're selling your practice eventually, you can sell all of the the digital marketing and online presence that goes along with it. Like, oh, I have a thousand reviews. I'm on page one. If it's the website is the other doctor's name, that doctor is going to want to change that, the purchasing doctor, and then he's going to lose some of the rankings that that domain has built up. I think owning several different domain names, that was the rage between like 94 and 2000. Mm Mm-hmm. But now it's uh, 2019. So would you say that strategy kind of died? Yes. Google used to place an importance on the domain. They no longer do that and they haven't done it for, you know, probably 10 years. So, yeah, if you're... Your URL only matters for marketing material. Like when you're telling someone to go to your website, that's when it's going to matter. You want to have, you know, a short URL that's easy to remember. And you want to try to stay away from those new um, domains that's like, you know, dot dentist or, you know, dot whatever, because people, they don't realize it yet and are still going to put dot com. Okay. Um, another uh, question. Um, and by the way, would you mind sometime when you're when you're uh, when your daughter's watching Frozen to just sit there on your uh, on your iPad and go to a dental town message board marketing building your website? Next person asks, um, how difficult is it to host your own website? What, what does that actually even mean? Should I host my website? Should somebody else host my website? What, what does that even mean? And should they do it or have someone else do it? Yeah, so your website lives on a server. That's where the all the content information lives. So if you're paying someone else to host your website, you're just paying them to host your information on their servers. If you want to buy your own server and host your own website, you can do that. It's probably going to cost you more money than anything. Um, nowadays, with all the cloud marketing or um, cloud domain services out there, you can host it on. You know, Amazon Web Services have really fast servers. The one thing to look for when you're hosting your website is how many people are going to have their website hosted on that server as well and how fast those servers are. You mentioned Amazon Web Servers. Um, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Maybe I'm brainwashed, but uh, GoDaddy's uh, big out here. Um, mm-hmm. is, but if someone said they wanted to host their website, um, is would Amazon Web Services, would that be your uh, first choice? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's so many out there and they're all relatively the same. There's, it's really like, there's no differentiating factors that make one company better than the other. Um, it's, you know, HostGator is another really good one. Um, that And these are questions that my CTO would be able to give, you know, a much more uh, educated answer, but he would say the same thing. It, it's not really a a big deal who you choose to just host your website. Well, if they're all the same, I'm going to recommend GoDaddy because he's the largest sponsor to um, our homeless clinic here in Phoenix, Arizona that Chris Volchek has run for 20 years. And it's actually not even the founder of GoDaddy. It's his adorable wife. Um, um, She uh, goes to all the fundraisers uh, for all the poor stuff. But anyway, um, the next question is, uh, which you're going to go back in and answer all these for me. Uh, is a mobile phone app required for a dentist website? No, not at all. Um, and quite frankly, most people don't want to download an app on their phone. So by no means, no. Well, a lot of people, um, went, you know, apps in, in my walnut brain, it, they really didn't take off until Jobs came out with the smartphone in 2007. But I remember from 2007 for five years, everybody was thinking, well, maybe I should have an app. Why did it not happen? I mean, obviously you're correct because how many dentists have their own app for their own website? It's, I think, like I said earlier, people don't want to have to download a bunch of different apps on their phone. You know, why would they download the app when they can just go to the website? In the past, people are trying to have apps because mobile websites weren't as good as regular websites. But now with responsive technology to where your website's going to rearrange and resize content based upon what size screen it's being viewed on, there's really no need for an app other than you could send out more targeted message to people who download an app. But it's I don't see that changing. Um, I think it's just 
you can for people who want to have an app, you can basically if you have an iPhone, you can add a bookmark to your home screen and it looks just like an app. So if you want to tell your patients to bookmark um, your website on their phone, they can do that and they're not downloading anything. Uh, the best dental marketing where it was done by actual research uh, was done by UCLA and it was done a long, long time ago. I mean, it, it was in the early 90s. And, uh, and then I saw uh, another one. But basically, everything I've seen that's done correctly said that you can divide America into two markets. One shops, for, for, I'm talking about Ford Dentistry. One shops, half of the market shops on price and is gonna go wherever their um, dental benefit takes them. And the other half uh, shop on the, uh, the dentist and they're scared and they're nervous and they're very particular about who uh, will touch them. Uh, so regarding half of the population that uh, that's on price, do you recommend that you list every PPO dental insurance company that you're participating in? So that if someone's not doing dentist near me, but Delta Dentist near me or Blue Cross and Blue Shield Dentist near me. Do you agree with that or disagree with that? Or what, what's your thoughts on that? No, I, I agree. I mean, if you're in network, you should let people know that you're in network. And again, it's all about giving people as many options as possible. And if you're working with a price conscious person, then letting them know that you're in network with their insurance provider is going to help influence their decision. So would you would you have that be a separate page? Or, or, or. Um, yeah, I would. You could put, you know, on a page where you talk about which insur insurances you accept or on the procedural pages where you're talking about the different procedures that you offer at the bottom. You can put a little paragraph like if you're interested for coming in today, you know, please call us to this day. We accept these, these, these and these insurances, whatever it may be. There's there's different ways to do it. But, yeah, I think it's important to list those things if you are, in fact, in network. Okay, so half of America shops on price, and my gosh, you know, they can barely, you know, buy everything their kids need and put lunches on the table and all that kind of stuff. The other half is very discerning, and they really want to see uh, who is actually working on me, and, and how do I know they're good? You call it testimonials, and I've always said that a digital camera to document your own work is more valuable than a CAD cam and a CBCT and a laser all rolled up into one. And I podcasted many people on this show um, where, you know, uh, a good 20% of their patients fly in on Southwest Airlines to get $25,000 implant cases done because they don't trust the guy uh, in Parsons, Kansas, who may be a diplomat in the International Congress of Implantology. But you go to his website, it looks like it was made in 1912. So what is the next question under uh, Dental Town Message Board, Marketing, Build Your Own Website? Uh, where can I buy before and after photos for sale since I don't have my own? Well, the answer is, why don't you have your own? I mean, if I was going to have a <laughs> surgery, I've seen this firsthand. So so talk about, uh, are there places to buy before and after sell, before and after photos for your own, if you don't have your own? Yeah, there are. There, I mean, if you just do a, a Google search, I mean, Adobe Stock has a huge library of photos that you can use. But like you said, I mean, Adobe Adobe Stock work. photos, mm -hmm. and then you buy them. Yeah, for your website. I mean, we we typically tell all of our clients to use their own, but we have some clients who we've used stock before and after photos for to demonstrate, you know, the effectiveness of a certain procedure. And what do you think? Um, so, so what what are you doing mostly with your customers? Are you are do, what percent of your? You said five percent like the tech stuff. What percent of the de dentists that you've met and work with actually have their own photos? Um, I would say mm, about half. Um, oh, that's good. And you're starting to see you're about you're, you're seeing a lot more of it. Um, like in recent years. I think that's that number has gone up to 50% where it probably was at like 30% a couple of years ago. I, like you said, with how cheap it is to purchase a digital camera and take high quality photos, there's no reason to not have photos. And we also provide practice photo shoots in our services. So a lot of times if a dentist doesn't want to, we'll actually come out there for them and take a bunch of photos. What I don't understand with dentists that, okay, you, you, you pay all these people, your highest overhead is labor and you, you don't want to take the photos. Well, you got a team 
I mean, can't you? And and a lot of team members say, well, you know, I don't know, you know, they're, they're fearful and say, okay, I'll send you to a course. Dentaltown has several online courses on, on taking photos, but I'm telling you, the way I, Talk about a testimonial. You know how nice it is to see a before and after and know that this this dentist standing in front of you is the one who did that. I mean, that's well, not only like, yeah, before and after photos mixed in with a video of that patient talking about it. I mean, that's a slam dunk right there. You're you're letting your patients sell your services for you. And there's no better person than to sell a service for you than someone who's actually used your service. There's a lot of questions on this SSL certificate. The next one again um is um the how much does it cost um how much is how do you, how much does it cost to buy the certificate how much does it cost to install it how, how much does it cost to get that not secure um off your um website like 10 10 15 bucks figure out where your website is hosted and contact whoever hosts them whether it's godaddy whoever it's through they'll be able to add a, a security certificate to your website. And if you're working with a marketing company, they should be doing that for you. Some of the people are saying, um, you know, like you, you're in big San Diego. I'm in big Phoenix. Is all this dental website, is this just a big urban dentist uh, conversation, kind of like rich world problems, you know? Um, if, but what if you're in a rural town of 25,000? Does a good website yeah. even matter in a town where everybody knows your name? It does. And the reason is, is think about if someone tells you, hey, go use my dentist, you're probably going to go check out their website before you call them. Unless you really trust that person, most of the time you will do a little bit of research still. So while you don't have to spend big bucks on like ongoing marketing services, it's still important to have a well-polished um, online presence because it's, it's a lot of times the first impression that you're going to make upon people and who knows where your leads are coming from. So yes, I think it's important for everyone to have a nice website, but I don't think it's as important for someone in a small rural town to spend as much money on marketing as someone, you know, in a New York City or San Diego. Okay, um, I want to um, make a, a pop quiz. Um, she's going to be pulling up to her office uh, shortly. Uh, she has an hour commute. She's going to get there in ten minutes. She's going to walk in, and before she does everything, she's going to pull up her website and. You're going to tell her right now how she could evaluate. She hasn't thought about her website in years. Um, she bought it at a dental convention 10 years ago and, and they did it. So she, cause that's my perception. And when I go to dentist website, like, okay, you, you bought this five to 10 years ago. How, what mm -hmm. is a quick and clean and dirty checklist for my homies to look at their dental office website and think, is this thing, is this good enough? It, is, yeah. Is it horrible? No, is it okay? It's what? It's funny that you, you bring that up. Um, in one of our latest blog posts on um, our website, which is getpracticegrowth.com, um, it's called Do It Yourself, an SEO kit to where we have different tools that you can plug your website into to check for duplicate content. You want to make sure that the content on your website is custom, that it's not being used by other dentists and it's only used on your website. Two, your NAP or name, address, and phone number. This is your directory listings. You wanna make sure that they're clear and concise across the board. If you plug your website into that free tool, it'll tell you everywhere your, your, your business is shown online and if there's any discrepancies in your directory listing. Number three, check for schema markup. Schema markup is how a marketer um, organizes the content on your website for Google to view it because Google looks at a website differently than we do. They crawl down the back end of the website. So a schema markup is like an enhanced site map to where you're telling Google, this is a page about implants. This is what we're talking about, how much they cost, what they are, how long they last. And Google likes that. Um, so again, if you go to getpracticegrowth.com, click the blog section, the title of the blog, um, it starts with do it yourself. And then I, I forget the exact rest of it, but you'll find it on there. Um, you actually, um, I'm a big fan of your um, of your blogs. Um, you have how Google determines your site ranking, how and how to improve yours, um, how to wow your patients using custom pop up videos, how using video can attract new patients and strengthen your bond with current patients. TDA perks webinar is that what you're talking about? TDA perks webinar? No, sir. I think it's it's like two or three more down. It's called. It starts with DIY. 
Okay, that's because I got too much. So online reviews, why they really matter and how to get them and what's next. That's your testimonials. Uh, and then what you're talking about, do it yourself, search engine optimization um, by this uh, Chargers fan uh, named Pete Johnson at Get Practice <laughs> Growth. Um, so um, you talked about you don't want duplicate content um, mm -hmm. and you can enter your website URL in this free tool to check for stock and duplicate content on your site. Check for mm -hmm. schema makeup. That one flew over my head. Markup. Markup. Yeah, schema markup. Again, that's the enhanced site map and how Google deciphers the information on your site. So when you have schema markup, you're like spoon feeding the content to Google in a way that they want it. Is that why some websites have a site map? Yes, I mean, site maps are standard, but a site map is like an enhanced, I mean, a schema markup is an enhancement to a site map. Huh, I, I, I've i never used a site map. Why, why, why do people use site maps? Uh, again, it's it's giving Google a way to easily okay. read all the content on your website and then take that back and index you accordingly. And schema markup is something you put on top of the site map to make it even easier for Google to do that. We're ending where we started with, with these testimonials. You, you need social confirmation that this is a good doctor. And you don't have the skill set to evaluate whether your root canal was done right or if it failed. It, it, it's just, it must be really awful uh, to be um, buying something when you have no idea what it is. And these testimonials help. But my homies all grew up in a library. They all got A's in calculus and physics and geometry. And they just, they don't have what it takes to say, oh, by the way, Pete, is there any way you'd give me an a, a online Google review? Uh, what, what, what are your thoughts to these guys? Yeah, um, to use a software that does it for you. There's lots of software companies out there that offer services that are specifically focused on gathering online reviews. And furthermore, you want to get quality online reviews. So with these softwares, they'll integrate with your practice management software and automatically send out text and or emails to your patients after they receive care. Now, you may not want to send it to everyone, so a lot of these softwares will allow you to pick and choose who you send it to. But still, it, even when you're sending out these text messages, you want to talk to your patients and let them know how important it is that you can get a review because at the end of the day, most people are willing to help out other people. They just don't realize the importance of leaving a review. So whether it's just be like, you know what? Hey, John, thanks for coming in today. Um, I'm going to send you out a text with a link to, you know, my Yelp page or my Facebook page. If you could just take a second to leave a review and tell me what you, what you think about, you know, the services I provide, that would be great. It would mean a lot to me. And people will do it. So it just takes being proactive and then utilizing the tools available to you to, to get those reviews. Um, you know, like in my office, like last week and today's done on Phoenix, you know, I worked, you know, um, you know, the standard, you know, I work Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And all my reviews, I never ask ever until I, in my mind, I call it until they walk into the sliding glass door. You know, they didn't see the door and they go, oh, my God, this is perfect. And then you just auto response. Oh, my God, I'd love to read you. I wish you were saying that on a Google review. Please don't tell me that. Will you say that on Google? And they start laughing. Mm -hmm. They go, hell yeah, I'll say it on Google. Exactly. Uh, and then I'll say the assistant, Christina Hander, where's her cell phone? Let's get her to do that right now. So I, I, I don't ever, and, and you know, and it must be a human psychology thing. Because remember that movie, um, Bernie Mado with the biggest um, um, Ponzi scheme ever where 50 yeah. million people lost money. I mean, he even said the whole trick to his deal since it's, since he needed you to trust him, he never brought up you investing in his account until you started it. And then when mm -hmm. you asked, he closed, but he never asked first. And that guy was the perfect sociopath. I mean, so, mm -hmm. so a, uh, so, you know, the bottom line, it, it just works on human motives. It don't, if you feel bad, I don't want you doing something that makes you feel bad because the patient will probably sense that you're feeling bad yes. or dirty or whatever. But if they ever tell you a compliment, say, man, that's nice to hear, but, God, I'd rather be reading that on a Google. And, yep. uh, and you know, so it, it's sincere. They, they said it first. So um, last but not least, um, what do you think my homies uh, don't know um, enough about their website? What, what, what do you think they um, are missing the most? Conversion. Um, how to set your website up to convert the traffic that it creates. It's 
sometimes people will get lost in the style of a website and not build it to where it's set up for conversion. You want to have call to actions littered throughout the website and placed strategically to maximize the eyes that view it. The best thing you like, think about your website as a, an experience. So when someone comes to your website, how do you make that experience so great that they decide to pick up the phone and call you? It, and the answer again is going to be very heavy with video and it's going to be working with a marketing company that really tries to figure out what your target audience is, what kind of messaging do they want to hear? Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's all about working with a marketing company that knows how to convert online traffic and that will work with you on how to maximize that traffic. And you know, I love that book. I forgot the name of it. Um, I, that was the, it was the, the telemarketing genius who sold all the whammoos and shamus and I mean, just just made a billion dollars. Like say, call to action. Please call now. Call the number on your screen. And if you call, I mean, it was always conversion, conversion, conversion. I mean, uh -huh. I mean, they 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 explained to you the product in less than a minute. And then the mm -hmm. 30 minute infomercial was just every conversion trick they called on a man. And then you're on a dentist website. And in order to find the phone number to contact, you got to click a little hamburger and exactly. go down there and you got to do multiple steps when it just said, call this number now. Are you worried mm -hmm. about how much the insurance costs? Call this, you know, um, conversion. Um, but, but, but the problem I have with conversion though, is whenever I'm talking to my friends, um, they don't know how many people landed on their website last month. They don't know how many of those that land on their website called the office. They don't know how many, they can't even tell you how many people called their office in the first half of 2019, let alone how many uh, that even called the office converted to make an appointment. So how do you set up a, a, a conversion scorecard so that you can say, hey, last month, a hundred people landed on your site, three called your office and you're, and you're, the lady answered the phone, converted one to come in. So here's yeah. what we can do. We can work on the lady yeah. answering the phone to convert two out of three instead of one out of three, or we can double your website marketing budget. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, what, what are other, um, how, how do you get a scorecard on your web a website? A heat map. A heat map? A heat map. Yeah, a heat map. And a heat map shows you where someone um, pushes their, or where their mouse hovers the most when they're viewing your website. So when you have a heat map on your website, you can see which parts of your site are viewed the most and then design your call to actions around the hottest spots on your heat map. And how do you get a heat map? Um, there's lots of different services out there that provide it. It comes standard for our SEO clients. Um, but if you just Google, you know, heat map for my website, you'll see bunches of different providers. And when you said for getting online reviews, you said work with, um, other platforms for that, Who? but you didn't mention any names. Yeah. Um, BirdEye, uh, Swell, Weed. Um, those are the three companies that I would recommend. Um, BirdEye and Swell are basically only focused on reviews, whereas Weave is a, a voiceover, um, internet phone that also has review generation capabilities in it. And uh, are they your are they your friends at Weave? Are any my yeah? Well, I don't want to throw them yeah. under a bridge, but the the deal is um, this voice over internet protocol is it bleeding edge or leading edge? Some people think they had the best internet connection. They switched to voice over internet protocol, and then they realize their phones were cutting out. Um, what, what, where is VoIP as of right now in 2019? Is is it bleeding edge or leading edge? I think it's leading edge and I think it's only going to get better as, you know, internet connections become faster and faster. And, you know, you're basically connected to the internet everywhere you go. Um, it's going to become more powerful. So I think right now it's already a great product and it's only going to get better as time goes on. And what if my uh, homies listening right now wants to know what you think of their website? Do you have a, um, um, uh, some, uh, what, what's, yeah. what's, what's, a, what's a way um, they can listen to you and find out if your website is good? How, how could they contact you? Would you what, what do you charge to analyze their web, their existing website? Yeah, so I, I don't charge anything to take a look at your website. That's just the cost of me doing business and 
you know, hoping that after I analyze your website, you're going to choose to work with us. But if you're interested in learning more, um, check out our website, getpracticegrowth.com. There's call to actions scattered all throughout the website where you can schedule a time to chat with me directly into my calendar. Um, my cell phone number is also 858-449-0560. Feel free to call me, text me. Um, but yeah, it's you should be able to figure out a way to contact me pretty easily if you go to our, our website at Get Practice. Okay, well, on your website, um, where would I contact you? The home, the video SEO, yeah. the blog? So right the on the home on the homepage banner, there should be a button that says schedule consultation. GPG appointment with Pete. So that's get practice growth appointment with Pete. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes web conferencing details provided in confirmation. And then you can just click one of those dates. Uh, this is yep. amazing. That's what we've done to our dental office. Uh, because I've lived through this rodeo with the ATM machine. I already knew nobody would ever want to use the ATM machine where they could walk in and see Shirley and get a red sucker. And I was wrong. Everybody wants the ATM machine. And uh, we did it on our website. And I mean, it wasn't even up for a day. And someone made an appointment online. And of course, the first thing the dentists think about is me, 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 sell, 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 me, me, sell, sell, me. Well, maybe I don't want her to come in at that time. Buddy, that's all about you. Are you dentist focused or patient focused? Um, she came to your website. It was 1030 at night. You're closed. And she made an appointment to come in uh, Monday at 10. So you have to work back from that constraint. I don't care about what you like and woulda, shoulda, coulda. Um, it's just, it's business, man. And people are complex. I agree. And the whole world is gone. Inter you know, it was telegraph, telephone, internet, which was text and then image. And now it's all video. And, uh, my mm -hmm. gosh, I can't wait. I never saw any of it coming. I can't wait till, uh, uh, another 10 or 20 years to see what's uh, next. And that'll be my know, last right? question. <laughs> what do you think the next big thing is going to be? What, what's the next big thing? I think teledentistry is going to become more and more relevant. Um, you know, video consultations to where the patient doesn't even come in. And maybe, obviously, you can't do a full consultation through the video, but you can still build on that trust and show the patients that you care. So I think teledentistry mixed in with the use of video is going to be um, – very relevant here in the not so distant future. And here is my closing comments. Uh, every time I'm done, and I did this several times last week and I'll be doing it again tomorrow. When I'm all done, I'll say, well, you know, you're all done, Pete. Um, so now if you go over to the hygiene department and you do exactly what Jamie and Brady tell you to do, I may never see you again. I mean, I haven't had a cavity in decades. And my assistant has not had a cavity in decades. And on that note, um, who can I replace you with? How many contacts do you have in your cell phone? Look at those contacts. Who do you think would love to come in here and, and have uh -huh. me and Christine do what you did? And yep. uh, they start laughing. I said, seriously, well, first just tell me how many people are you in contact? So look in there and she'll say, oh my God, you know, I got, you know, uh, 600. And I'll say, has anybody complained about their tooth to you? Well, you know, actually last week, at mom's house, my sister's husband couldn't even eat because he was swollen on the right side. And you mentioned teledentistry. And I'll say FaceTime him. And I always hope they have iPhones because I love that FaceTime. Yep. They'll FaceTime him. And I'm doing teledentistry for free right there. And I am shocked mm -hmm. that when he holds it up and pulls back his cheek with his iPhone, I mean, I'm right there. I'm like, I'm like in his mouth. Yeah. And that is teledentistry for me. And I'll say, Come on, your sister-in-law came in here to make sure it was safe enough for big boy to come <laughs> in. Uh, come on, dude, you're swollen. I mean, I have practiced long enough where three times someone with a swelling ended up having to go in the middle of the night to the emergency room with IV Jeez. antibiotics and had a Ludwig's angina or whatever get out of control. So um, when do you want to come down? And and then um, and this is where the staff gets uh, uh, upset. They, he says, well, wh when can I come down? I said, come on down right now. And my assistant's like, oh my God, did you really just say that? You're, you know, uh, but um, because you figure they might not come down or in 20 minutes might take an hour. And by the time he gets here, the the patient that I'm supposed to be working on might have canceled or no showed. But man, it's just, it's just um, if you love what you do, you should want to be on a mission to spread the word. Agreed. But Pete Johnson, I uh, thank you so much uh for coming yeah. on the show today and spending an uh, an hour with my homies. 
Uh, it was very informative to me and uh, good luck uh, with Riley, the most important project you've ever undertaken. I hope she does grows up well, even though she doesn't have an NFL football team. She can always <laughs> be an Arizona Cardinal. Eh, we'll see about that. All right. Have a good day.